My Aunt Rosa was recently diagnosed with nephritic syndrome. When I went to her house the other day, I realized that I do not fully understand her situation. My aunt is suffering a lot, and I don't think that her kidney medicine will help her aching pain. I'm going to visit three doctors who can help me understand my aunt's syndrome. So what is nephritic syndrome? To start off, a syndrome is a set of symptoms or conditions that occur together and describe the presence of a specific disease or an increased probability of developing the disease. Nephritic syndrome is a kidney disorder characterized by high levels of protein in the blood and low concentration of albumin, a protein, in the urine. But how do I know Aunt Rosa has nephritic syndrome? Well, when your doctor diagnosed your aunt, he probably found symptoms in her such as blood in the urine, swelling in the face, eye socket, legs, arms, hands, feet, abdomen, or other areas, uh, blurred vision, decreased alertness, drowsiness, confusion, general aches or pains. Not to worry, but in more extreme cases, the patient may develop symptoms of chronic kidney disease or acute kidney failure. So which tests should Aunt Rosa take to confirm her diagnosis? During Aunt Rosa's examination, her physician may look for the following traits to make sure she has a diagnosis of nephritic syndrome. Abnormal heart and lung sounds, enlarged liver, general swelling, high blood pressure, and signs of fluid overload in the abdomen. To confirm these symptoms, the physician will perform the following tests. A test on blood electrolytes, which include minerals such as sodium, potassium, and chloride, responsible for regulating the body's nerve and muscle function, an examination of the proteins in the urine and the appearance and color of the urine, and lastly, a kidney biopsy, which would show the inflammation of the glomeruli, which are the capillaries that surround the end of the kidney tubule, meaning small tube where waste products are filtered. Dr. Z, what are some treatments? First of all, Aunt Rosa will have to remain in the hospital. The goal of her treatment will be to reduce inflammation in the kidney and to control high blood pressure. The physician will prescribe Aunt Rosa with ACE inhibitors to control the high blood pressure. Additionally, anti-inflammatory medications will be prescribed to her in order to reduce the inflammation. Lastly, the doctor will certainly recommend rest and uh, your aunt will need to limit her intake on salt, fluids, potassium, and proteins. If her condition is not cured in the short term, she will have to start taking vitamin D more frequently. So I want to better understand my aunt syndrome. What goes on in the body with this illness? Since the nephritic syndrome is a problem of the kidneys, as the capillaries get closer to the kidneys, Fluids start to pass through the thin capillaries through the process of osmosis. Osmosis is the process of fluids passing from an area of high density to an area of lower density across a semi-permeable membrane. The problem with nephritic syndrome is that proteins in the blood are diffused into the kidneys, something that is not supposed to happen. Since the proteins dissolve water, the concentration of fluids in the kidneys is lower, so there is a higher exchange of fluids across the semi-permeable membrane. Since there is such a great exchange of liquids, blood also flows into the kidneys, something that is not normal. This exchange of liquids also dehydrates the body. The kidneys then transport the liquids along with the proteins and blood through the urinary system and leave the body through urine. How can this syndrome affect my aunt's defense system? Since blood may enter the kidneys during the presence of nephritic syndrome, red blood cells and white blood cells could also enter the kidneys and leave the body through the urinary system. This is called a hematuria. A hematuria can cause a loss of defense by the immune system because of the loss of white blood cells and therefore a disorder in the lymphatic system, which we will talk about later. This disease also causes low albumin in the blood because the albumin escapes through osmosis. 
Albumin, as mentioned before, is a protein of the blood. A deficiency of albumin, also known as hypoalbuminemia, can result in kidney or liver diseases. Would it help my aunt if she ate less salty food? The salt intake greatly affects the severity of some symptoms. As the salt diffuses into the kidneys, the salt, being a solute, decreases the concentration of water, so through the process of osmosis, more water diffuses through the capillaries into the kidneys. This causes dehydration and many other symptoms of the nephratic syndrome. As much as Aunt Rose's condition is likely caused by salt retention, I think it would be helpful to learn more about blood. Fortunately, I do happen to know Dr. McLeod, a hematologist and a good friend of mine. Dr. McLeod, can you please enlighten me on some of the key components of blood? In addition to what Sam said, we will be discussing the proteins in the blood. The blood is composed of six major proteins. They are albumins, fibrinogen, clotting factors, globulins, antigens, and hormones. Albumins are a protein made by the liver. They help regulate the colloidal osmotic pressure of the blood. By getting rid of albumins, blood and proteins can get into the kidneys and urinary tract. Fibrinogens are a protein produced by the liver. They help to stop the building of a cut by helping to form a blood clot. Clotting factors are proteins in the blood that work together through a series of chemical reactions to control bleeding. Globulins are a protein that contain antibodies that protect the body against bacterial and viral diseases. Antigens are a protein that help to start the production of antibiotics through the immune system. And lastly, we have hormones. They are a messenger proteins that help to coordinate the functions of the body. Now I understand everything I need to know about nephritic syndrome. But I've also noticed that my aunt has been experiencing some signs of swelling. Can you please explain to me what this swelling is and why it is occurring? This swelling is also called edema. Edema is the swelling caused by an excessive accumulation of fluid in the body's tissues. It is a general response of the body to injury or inflammation. This swelling usually occurs at the feet, ankles, and legs, but it can involve the entire body. Edema results whenever small blood vessels become leaky and result and release fluid into nearby tissues. Leaking capillaries will cause the kidneys to accumulate higher than normal quantities of salt and water in order to compensate for the capillary fluid loss. This results in more blood circulating in the body, which in turn causes even more swelling. There are two specific reasons behind Aunt Rosa's swelling. One of the causes is low albumin levels, and the second reason is the nephritic syndrome. The lymphatic system, which constitutes a major part of the body's immune system, is partially responsible for the transport of filtered fluid to the heart and the portion of blood and waste incapable of entering the veins. The transport of filtered fluid is performed through a series of lymph vessels and lymph nodes. Although the lymphatic system transports fluid to the circulatory system, it is different than the circulatory system because it only transports fluid in one direction. It is made up of the following organs, tissues and particles. Lymph vessels, lymph nodes, the spleen, the thymus, the tonsils, the proteins, and lymphocytes, which are immune cells. Additionally, the lymphatic system is made up of a clear, colorless fluid originating in the tissue spaces as lymph fluid. This fluid is composed of the following two components. White blood cells, especially lymphocytes, which are cells that attack bacteria in the blood, and fluid from the intestines called chyle, which contains proteins and fat. The essential role of the lymphatic system is regulating the volume of fluids and tissues. The human body's lymphatic system is responsible for cleaning excess fluid from tissues and organs. Nevertheless, the lymphatic system has several other key roles. 
The lymphatic system plays an important role in preparing the immune system during infections by carrying material to local lymph nodes and regulating the volume of fluid and tissues. Furthermore, it is important to note that the lymphatic system not only carries lymph fluid, but it also removes waste products and toxins, dead blood cells, and pathogens, as well as returning proteins to the cardiovascular system. Lastly, the lymphatic system absorbs fats from the digestive system and delivers these nutrients to the cells of the body where they are used by the cells as a source of energy. However, while the lymphatic system helps protect the human body, it can also cause problems when damaged. When the human body becomes excessively acidic, the lymphatic system is damaged, congested, or blocked, so the lymph nodes and lymph vessels draining an area cannot perform their tasks effectively, resulting in lymph fluid, wastes, and proteins building up in the tissue. The lymphatic system thus becomes incapable of removing the excess fluid, and swelling, also known as edema, occurs. The lymphatic system is also affected by the nephritic syndrome because as blood exits the body, it takes away an important component of the lymphatic system, white blood cells, and thereby it weakens the system.